Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Mike, and this is For The Record. Well, this is uh, a bit of an impromptu video. Uh, I lost power last night, and it got me thinking. With no power, it was dark, it was quiet, and I was thinking of a um, inspiration for a video to do, and what came to mind was, well, if you can't listen to music, it's so quiet. What albums would I recommend um, solely due to the album cover or album art? So I'm going to call this 10 plus 1 albums that I recommend due to the album cover. Uh, why 10 plus 1? Well, origi originally I was thinking, well, maybe 4 or 5. Um, 20 is too much, 5 is not enough. So I picked out 10, but I realized that um, I ended up with 11. So 10 plus one albums I recommend solely due to um, the album cover. I don't in any way, shape or form intend uh, for this to be a thread, but if, if you wanna make this into a thread, um, God bless you. Just let me know that you're going to and that way I can watch it. Um, but again, I, I don't intend on making this a thread. This is just something I don't think I've ever seen uh, here on YouTube. Uh, and I just thought I would um, just kind of do something unique. So 10 plus 1 albums I recommend solely due to the album cover or album art. Okay. The first one, Mahala Jackson, the world's greatest gospel singer. Okay. Great gospel singer, what can I say? If you don't know her, uh, any one of her albums um, is, is superb. But I recommend this one because of... Well, the album cover is number one. Mahala Jackson is just, just sit back and drink your tea or coffee and just, it just it will take you to another world. Uh, this is a no brainer. This is Buddy Holly Showcase on the Corral label. I absolutely love this album cover. Um, this is, I believe, my, the first um, Buddy Holly album I ever bought. And, uh, it's an original pressing. The um, the bottom here, you can kind of see it's a little. It's not discolored, but it's like um, it, it's not. I don't know it's kind of weird. It's kind of hard to explain what it is. But um, it's a little imperfection right here. I'm not sure. It's not. It didn't get wet. I don't know. It's like something got stuck on it. But um, Buddy Holly showcase. Um, absolutely love this album. Uh, let me just say this: these aren't by any means um, the best albums in my collection. They're just albums that I recommend solely due to the album cover. Nothing to do um, with the best of any means. But anyway, moving right along. Um, let's do this one. Oh, this one will be a little bit, of, a little bit of a story. Okay, we have the Eagles self-titled. Um, I'll try to make this short. Um, I don't remember everybody responsible for this album cover, but if you, if you're unaware of the story this is probably one of the album covers that has um in my collection i think that has the most controversy over it well with the exception of a couple other ones but strange story if you're unaware so you know you have the first you have the first original jacket or pressing of this album if you open it up because these have been reissued you know the second pressing third pressings and um, it's completely different on the inside, but you know they have the first cover because you have your, it's a gatefold. You have this at the front, this at the back, and you open it up, and the band is upside down around a campfire. They are tripping on peyote buttons, and they're all hanging out in the desert, and the story behind the cover is those responsible, um, their intent was you would get the album, and you would open it up and you would look at the band. This is the cover right here, the front cover right here. And here's the band right down here. And the band is tripping on peyote buttons around a campfire. And the uh, record label said, no, that's too complicated. So they took whatever they could get their hands on, whether it was at a record store or they were in, you know, in, in you know, uh, in a warehouse. They took them. They said, "Glue them shut." 
So they went back, they took them, they glued the seam here, they glued the seam there, and you come up with, I think this is more confusing because now you open it up and you are looking at um, the band upside down. So not a good call on, on the record label, but um, that's what they decided to do. So it's a great album, and because of that, I recommend uh, the Eagle self-title. The next one or two are going to be from the one, the only, the late Johnny Cash. The first one, this is where I came up with the 10, the 10 plus 1. I couldn't decide. Out of all these, I couldn't decide. Just 10. I had to do 10 plus 1. Johnny Cash, greatest on the Sun label. Again, not meant to be the greatest um, in my collection, but uh, solely because of the album covers. Um, I just absolutely love these. Great albums. Highly recommend them because of the album covers. And I just love that. I just love this, this cover. This is probably one of my favorites. You know, the man and his guitar. There you go. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So this is a Blue Ridge Rangers. Um, well, it's John Fogarty. Okay, if you don't know who this is, the Blue Ridge, Ra Blue Ridge Rangers is John Fogarty. Okay, so just coming off of the um, the years with CCR, CCR disbanded, um, and he uh, had been working in this, in my opinion, uh, long before he broke up with. CCR. Um, so the story behind this cover is I recommend it because of the cover because every one of these people right here that is John Fogarty because he plays every instrument um, on this um, on this album. So that's that's all John right there. It's all John Fogarty right there. He plays all the instruments. So I guess it's um, I guess it fits that he be. Uh, do what you want on the, on the cover because you played all the instruments. There you go. Great album. Great album cover. Blue, the Blue Ridge Rangers. So, moving along with Tom Fogarty's. This one is Tom Fogarty's um, self-titled. Um, I recommend this because of the album cover. You know, I look at this and I, you know, you're like, who's Tom Fogarty? Well, Tom Fogarty was CCR. He was the rhythm section of CCR. Um, the backup guitarist for CCR. I look at this album and, you know, I think, I think he, um, I think I had the most sorrow for, um, out of everybody in the band, um, is with, with Tom because I feel like, he, I, I don't think he got the recognition that he deserved um, when he left CCR. I think he was always in the shadows of CCR. Um, he was always in the shadows of his um, younger brother, John. Um, and I, I think looking at this, I just, I just, I feel like he's got so much sorrow in, in his expression. Uh, maybe that wasn't his intent. Maybe I'm misreading it, but I just feel like, you know, like I said, Tom just was always in the shadows. Um, even when he left the band, and I think he certainly was an underrated artist when he left, and I don't think he really got the recognition he got because of um, he was in CCR, and nobody really, nobody, you know, even though he had a career after that, um, he I don't ever I don't think he ever got out of the shadows, and he did have a career. He had he had he has several um, albums. Um, solo albums, but I don't think he ever got the recognition that he deserves and um, he would really be kind of nice that they would you know, maybe um, Maybe release re-release his stuff um, As like a box set or something just because I think he's a really good artist I recommend all of his out all of his solo stuff all of his solo albums But this one I think is probably one of if not the best um, You know, I just love the album cover. It's just got so much um I don't know. I'm just reading a lot of sorrow in that, in in his expression there. Moving along to a, well, I wouldn't say happier band, but um, quite the um, controversy, quite the um, the sadness with Canty. Now, I love this album cover. Um, you know, 
You got canned heat right there. Literally, canned heat. Um, but, you know, this is their, their first album. And I, I, I just love this cover. You know, I, I tend to always go towards um, an artist's debut album um, as my favorite. But I think because of the cover, um, I, I just totally recommend this, this album. Canty, self-titled, very first album. Okay. And I'm sure you've heard of them, but certainly recommend this one. Moving right along to uh, probably one of, if not the best sounding records in my collection. Um, I did a album review on the Eagles live from the forum, and I had said it was in my top five or seven or eight album best sounding albums in my collection. This one um, probably takes probably takes the cake on the best sounding album in my collection certainly the best sounding live album now this was this is a reissue this is not an original pressing by any means this I, want to, I keep forgetting where it's i think it was pressed in yep it was pressed in germany i keep forgetting that now i'm not sure where the all if all the reissues of hell freezes over if they were all re, um repressed in germany um if you have the opportunity to find out where it was manufactured um, and it was different it's different I, I can't really speak for that all I can speak for is the Eagles hell freezes over um, the pressing that was pressed in Germany this is my top sounding out live albums or best sounding albums in my entire collection um, and uh, yeah I just solely because of the not not only the sound but um the sound quality but the album cover hell freezes over reissue love to get my hands on an original pressing to compare the sound um but until that day comes um i recommend this because of the album cover a couple left we're on number 10 i think um Boy, this album has some controversy. This is uh, Pete Seeger, uh, Sh Pete Seeger, Strangers and Cousins. And this was basically um, from his world tour, uh, excerpts from his world tour. Uh, Pete Seeger um, sang, uh, you know, sings folk songs, um, spreading joy and happiness and breaking barriers wherever he went. Uh, with uh, his song and uh, this this album cover speaks in volume um, because you have an Asian girl here you know your typical Asian let's be politically correct here and then you have it, you know you look at the blonde haired girl in the back but the more you look at her she is just as um, Asian as you're right here so what does that mean? Strangers and cousins, you know? Uh, with Pete Seeger breaking down barriers, that could mean a lot. But because of um, however you may interpret the album cover, um, I completely and totally recommend this album. Now, I'm trying to remember, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, this entire album is basically... It's it's Pete Seeger singing in um, well traveling the world, um, but he is I, I don't understand anything he's singing because it's all in another language. If I remember, I believe all the songs are in, in all in, he's singing um, in in different languages or in different language. Um, but you know you sit there, it, it, it still is just so peaceful and. You can just feel the love and um, you can just, you, you may not understand what he's saying, but um, you can just, you can just feel the music. You don't really have to understand what he's sing what he's singing or what he's saying, but just that the song is, you know, it's just, it's just peace, you know? And uh, I believe all the songs he's singing in a completely different language. So, um, but for the album cover, I recommend this album. 10 plus one. I say, I'm saving the best for last, I think. I didn't do that on purpose. Um, Mississippi John Hurt. Um, if you are unfamiliar who Mississippi John Hurt is, uh, briefly I will 
try to say try to tell you briefly. Um, so Mississippi John Hurt, he was um, he was a um, blues a blues singer uh, in the teens and twenties. Um, he had he had made I want to say I think maybe a couple of seventy eights. He actually you know his music was he was actually becoming pretty famous. Um, but then the Great Depression, um, with the Great Depression, his music got lost. Um, and he was forgotten about until the 60s. So the Great Depression, all the metal plates that made his music um, were melted down to, you know, for, you know, because of the Depression. So uh, all, of, all of his music was lost. Now, if you are able to find a 78 um, by Mississippi John Hurt, it is literally gold. It is worth, it is not only, not, not the monetary value, um, but it's worth so much because his music, his music was, was gone. His music disappeared for decades. Uh, so, um, like I said, all of the metal plates made, uh, that would, that made the 78s, um, they were burnt down. Um, his music was lost forever. The 60s come along. Um, a producer that at one point I, I was it a record was it a producer or a radio station I think it was a, a record producer um, heard his music can't remember under what, under what circumstances but um, the record producer heard his music um, and wanted to know who it was and again this is in the 60s the I want to say the mid 60s can't remember exactly when like around the mid 60s so this producer said I want to know who this guy is searched him out found him lo and behold he was in the same town that he lived in and this is decades later i just can't remember if it was a record producer or a radio station i want to say i think pretty sure it was a record producer so sought out john hurt um found him living in the same town he lived in for many years and found him singing songs like this in with just his guitar no microphone just singing guitar sing, singing in his guitar and brought him back up to stardom um decades later but at the time they didn't want to label him as blues so they label him as folk he's not folk but a lot of i actually have a couple of um compilation folk albums or uh, compilation folk um albums that um they put his music on that I, I actually have a few of them um because that's how they that's how they could um get his music heard they didn't want they didn't know do, they didn't know if they should do it blues or they they felt at that time that they wanted to label his music as folk because folk was what was going on uh folk music is what was hot in the 60s so that's why they labeled mississippi john hurt's music as folk so again, you'll find a lot of his music. If you have folk compilation albums, take a close look at them because a lot of his music is on some of those folk um, compilation albums. I have a, a couple of box sets here that um, that I I had and I looked at it and I was like, oh, wow, great. His music's on there. So um, I de certainly worth uh, taking a look at your compilation albums, your folk compilation albums, and seeing if... Mississippi John Hurt is on any of them and if it is fantastic highly recommend this particular album his stuff is really hard to find because of that reason but um, this you know his music this is it this is him you know nothing fancy uh, sitting you know some of his music this this is this is what you get right here and it is so good it is so simple it's so simple it's stupid it, it's good you know, it's um, Mississippi John Hart, what can I say? His, his music just blows me away. You know, no matter if you're in a good mood, you're in a bad mood, you put this on. Um, I mean, what can I say? There you go. Love the album cover. Absolutely. And that's it, everybody. Coming up in the next week or two, I'm going to be doing top finds for February of 2021. Um got some great stuff I'll be showing if you haven't seen top finds for January of 2021 be sure to check that out and as always be kind to others peace